I get, I was a little excited. I am so grateful to be here with you. Our office is very excited um, to be presenting um, for Rackham. Um, I see that um, we have an interest in a little bit of everything um, from the pool. Um, and that it looks like low energy. Hopefully, um, me and my team will bring that energy for you. But we are very appreciative of um, you making it. Um, we do hope that it will live in infinity um, via the recording. Um, are there any questions before we get started on information? Okay. I try very hard to give enough wait time. So let me know if I'm not giving enough processing time and I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So as Sam said, we are ASAP Academic Support and Access Partnerships. That is our email um, that you can always reach out to us with. Um, we are housed within SAAS. So that is Student Accessibility and Accommodation Services. Sorry, I thought that was going to go to um, the overview of our office. So our mission um, within ASAP is um, a department and we are built on providing intentional engagement with students, which will build relationships that support their academic experience while also fostering an accessible and inclusive environment through meaningful and strategic partnerships. So we have our programming, but we also are partnering with different places um, on campus so that we can create access for students. Um, academic accessibility and inclusivity for ASAP means identifying executive functioning barriers that stem from their disabilities and working together uh, to gain the knowledge and skills to overcome those barriers. ASAP is committed to creating an inclusive collegiate environment that meets the diverse needs of students with disabilities while working to dismantle barriers to their educational success. So we have a number of different programs that we do um, that we have incorporated um, to kind of meet those needs, but we're always thinking and receiving feedback from students on how we could expand. So if you're ever like, I wonder if we could do this, I wish this was offered we always are open to that kind of feedback. So the programs that we currently offer within our office are academic coaching, PASS, which is our peer assisted study sessions. And we're gonna talk about all of these. Um, coaching corner workshops, we have a Canvas site, uh, career support, scholarships and grants, campus partnerships and student engagement. So this is what our structure looks like. So Dr. O um, is our Director of Student Accessibility and Accommodation Services. I work directly underneath him and I work with my colleagues, Amy and Mike, and we have a plethora of grad students um, that work with us and um, coach a lot of undergrad students. So we are eternally grateful um, for that, those partners within our grad students. So, oops, mouse is being touchy. Um, so the terminology um, that we wanna talk about um, to set the tone um, is we hear a lot of people say um, that, uh, oh, they're, that person's neurodiverse. Um, we want to make sure that we understand that um, I am a neurodivergent person. I am. Um, I'm not a neurodiverse person because neurodiverse means that there are a lot of different um, neuro, uh, neuro, neurological abilities within that group. And I am just one person. So I am neurodivergent. Um, somebody else may be neurotypical. Um, we promote neurodiversity because we think that it takes a lot of different ways of coming at problems, ways of thinking about different things to really make a successful society. So we promote neurodiversity. I am a neurodivergent person. Um, you may be a neurotypical person. Um, and then together we are neurodiverse. So we just wanted to make sure that we clarify those terms. Um, neurodivergent actually has a lot of different um, uh, aspects that are covered within that. Um, there is 
so many of them, but ADHD, autism, bipolar, schizophrenia, Down syndrome, dyscalculia, dysgraphia, uh, dyspraxia, um, dyslexia, all of those and more are um, under the umbrella of neurodivergent. I know a lot of people um, want to think that neurodivergent is ADHD and autism only. Um, that is not what the umbrella covers. Are there any questions about the terminology or these aspects yet? And we're gonna wait time. All right. So a lot of times um, neurodivergent students struggle with executive functioning skills. Um, so executive functioning skills are a set of cognitive processes and mental skills that help an individual plan, monitor, and successfully execute their goals. So I love color. So um, this visual is amazing for me because it lets me see all of the different things um, that are included within executive functioning skills. Um, so a lot of students think that um, academic coaching only works on planning and prioritizing or task initiation and organization. But we actually work with a lot of students um, on emotional control, thinking about how we respond in certain situations and practicing those types of things. Um, so that is an aspect of executive functioning skills. And if you are neurodivergent, sometimes you may be weaker in some areas versus other areas. Are there any uh, EFS questions? I'm trying to monitor chat too. So just let me know if, if you can throw things in there too. Um, so how do students connect with our office? Um, the primary mode, and we will have a QR code to it, um, is our all-encompassing Qualtrics survey. Um, it really will direct you to a lot of different things. It helps us filter out um, what we don't do. So some students do confuse us with weekly coaching sessions, um, counseling sessions. Um, that is not the, the focus um, of our work. While we do think that we support mental health, counseling is, is not how we do it. We do it by trying to work on skills that will make your academia more manageable to you. Um, so we have an all-encompassing, if you're like, I don't know where to start, I don't know exactly what I need, that is our primary mode um, to have students get in contact with our programming. Um, so um, yeah, if if it is more mental health counseling, um, we then refer you out to CAPS. Um, Similarly, if you just want check-ins um, without any skill building, then we definitely refer you to our past sessions um, because those are good for those types of things. There are other ways to connect with us though. So um, if a student is interested only in past, we have a, a link within our website um, that will get you right to a direct contact to sign up for which sessions you're interested in. If you're interested in one-time workshops, we have a direct link on our, our site to, to see those, and we're going to talk about them too today. Um, and then if you're a student interested in getting involved with disability-focused student orgs, um, or if you have any other broad questions, you're like, I'm not sure where to start, always reach out to that email for us. So academic coaching, this is actually how our program started. Um, so academic coaching is one-to-one -one coaching that focuses on the process of learning and executive functioning skill building. Um, so with an ASAP team member, students examine their learning experience, their habits of working, uh, difficulties and barriers that they might be currently experiencing. Um, and then we um, set goals and develop academic skills and um, learning strategies around those goals. Um, they are student-focused goals, so the student will give us those. It's not us coming up with them. We will work with you to come up with goals, um, but it is student-centered. Um, coaching is very individualized. So if one week um, we're working on time management and the next week you come in and say, I cannot focus because everything is unorganized, we are, we are working with you. So we will shift on a dime to make sure that we are individualizing your support so that we are meeting your needs within the moment. Um, so know that that is something that coaching is focused on, really individualized support. 
Um, it is always available starting the second week of, uh, actually that should say fall, winter, and um, spring, summer semesters for undergraduate, graduate, and professional students. So um, it is available to everyone. And we hear a lot that maybe um, there are there is a need for this within graduate students. So this is actually a bulk of our coaching is coming from graduate students. So don't worry like, oh, I don't wanna be the only one that needs academic coaching. You're not. Um, there are lots of graduate students that are seeking the support and feel like it's one of the most beneficial supports that they've received on campus. So we do like to talk about flow. So there is a typical flow um, um, that is always adjustable, but uh, I am someone who likes to know things going into anything. Um, so I like to be prepared. So um, the main components of academic coaching um, is identifying what skills you want to develop, um, creating a SMART goal around those skills, um, trying different strategies each week to target that skill. So we work on, hey, what's worked in the past? Um, what have you tried? What haven't you tried? We create uh, what we think will work, um, but we obviously um, don't have all of the answers right off the bat. So we ask that you practice it, try it, um, and then we come back and we debrief. And we talk about what's working, what's not working, um, and then we adjust. That I really liked this aspect of the skiller strategy, but I didn't like this aspect. Okay, let's adjust it in that way. Um, so know that that's something that we do. And we also do a lot of resource sharing um, to support students in other areas that they may need help with. I promise you we'll get a new speaker soon. Um, the typical flow of our past session, that's another thing that we offer, um, our peer assisted study sessions. Um, it is a three hour block of study time. Um, and the typical flow is when you enter, you are given 15 minutes to get set up and ready to begin the session. It um, Then students can share their goals for that, that three hour time slot. Um, the facilitator sets up breaks on the fiveable site for a visual. This is when, this is our work study. Um, then every, 50, every 45 minutes, they will have a work session and then you will have a 15 minute break. Then you will have a 45 minute work session and then a 15 minute break for the three hour break or three hour session. Um, so during that session, you have a facilitator in there. So if you experience a roadblock, like I, I just really can't get this done. I'm not being able to focus. The facilitator is also a coach. So they will be able to troubleshoot with you via chat or go into a breakout room and work with you um, to help you overcome that roadblock. Um, the typical number of students in each session can range from two to 15. Um, we haven't really had more than 15. Um, so we have on-campus sessions and virtual sessions that are available. And we do have two weekly sessions where we have Sweetland peer writing consultants that are embedded within our sessions. So if you're, you are like, I would like to sign up because maybe I will need writing support. You can come into um, those sessions and receive writing support without ever having to make an appointment. And this is what our um, past sessions look like for the fall. We have one on Monday from three to five. Tuesday, we have one from three to, or sorry, three to six, three to six on Tuesday, three to six on Wednesday, starting a bit later. Thursday, we have a 12 to three and a three to six. That Thursday, three to six has a Sweetland uh, writing consultant embedded. Friday, we have a past session from 12 to three. We also, and that has a Sweetland writing consultant. And then we also have one from three to six. Uh, Saturday, we have some on-campus sessions, um, nine to 12 and 12 to three are on-campus sessions. Sunday, we have two on campus, 12 to three and three to six. And then we also have a three to six virtual. So unless it states on campus, it is a virtual session. Um, but we do within that try to do body doubling as much as possible because we think that that's what really works with PASS is seeing a group of uh, students working together towards common goals or individual goals. Before I throw it to my colleague, Mike, um, are there questions about academic coaching or PASS? 
you can ask them right now, or you can let that marinate and um, marinate, not marinate, not both, um, and ask me in a little while. Are there any current questions? Ooh, this is a great question. Thank you, Kate. So sorry, I got so excited because this is different for grad and undergrad. Yes, the answer is yes. Uh, for academic coaching, if you're a grad student not currently in classes, because we're doing a lot of writing and research as grad students. So that will go even if you're not in classes. Um, undergrad, we, we tend to focus on if you're in classes, but grad students, you are open to, to sign up for academic coaching, even if you're not currently in classes. Phenomenal question. Okay, I'm gonna pass it off to Mike. Please don't hesitate to ask, okay. You have a question, Christy? I know, I got so excited again. Um, do I need to have some proof of neurodivergence to be able to attend? Absolutely not. Um, so this is a personal, this is a possibly a personal belief of mine. I think that proof um, documentation um, is more of a barrier than it is productive. Um, so absolutely not. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Mike Ziadat. I'm a program lead in ASAP. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Christy. So I'll uh, discuss some of the other programs that ASAP offers in addition to uh, coaching and PASS. So we do offer a workshop series each semester. Um, this For this semester for the fall, we have our, our new workshop series as well. And these are participatory workshops. So, you know, these are not workshops for you to show up and someone presenting something and you going, you know, going home uh, after that or turning off the, the call. Um, this is where there are questions, there's engagement, there are activities, there's discussion. Uh, resources will be shared with you based on conversations or questions you have during the session. We try to have them about once a week-ish, uh, so it'll be divided throughout the semester. So, and if there are days you're not available to participate, we will have them available on our Canvas page, which I'll discuss in a minute as well. Um, so, and we'll have uh, recordings as well. So you'll have access to slides, recordings. Um, how do you have access to these workshops? Um, if you uh, look at the QR code here, um, you should have access to a link to register for any particular session that you have interest in. Um, I encourage you to register for as many as you, you can. Um, and they're on on different days, different times. Uh, they are virtual for the most part each semester. So in these workshops, um, we do have a focus on academic skill building. So Christy mentioned executive functioning skills. So those are uh, a big part, a major part of our workshops. Um, and we also have some other disability related topics as well um, and neurodivergent uh, identity topics. Um, and they're facilitated by uh, part of our uh, student staff. Um, and they are uh, engaging, exciting, and we try to make them as relevant and relatable as possible. And it is open to all U of M students, um, uh, the whole U of M community actually, uh, regardless of your status. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, here's the flyer for this semester. Um, as you can see, we have uh, a variety of topics. So we already, uh, we started uh, the first one for this term on the, in the first week of September. Our upcoming one is going to be the 27th, um, uh, so next week, and it's on time management. So if that's a particular topic, huh. um, it should be a sessions um, QR code. Uh, I will put the link in the chat box as well uh, after this slide. So I'll, I'll put the link in the chat box. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, time management is the topic that we'll be covering for our next one. As you can see, the other topics are organization, uh, anxiety management, uh, you know, career navigation, note-taking skills, and, um, other topics like talking about chronic illness, if you want to kind of have some strategies on how to navigate 
uh, being a student or academic support uh, with a chronic illness. Uh, we have strategies on, on de-stressing and relaxation. And our final um, workshop for the semester is going to be combating mental health with art. So this is more, more of a creative uh, approach to managing that. And if, as you can see, it's in the middle of November, approaching finals. So if you feel like that's a, you need some kind of therapeutic approach in uh, fighting the stress or anxiety you're feeling at that time of the semester, that's a really good workshop. Um, so the registration link, um, uh, you can access it through this QR code. So I would try this one if the first one isn't working for some reason. Um, and the link will be provided also. And you can always email our email ASAP programs at umich.edu for any general questions uh, as well. Next slide. So in conversation on the workshop, so we actually upload a lot of the content that we have from our workshops and other programs and resources that we have onto our Canvas page. Um, we have a Canvas page that has, uh, you'll have access to not only our department information or our, our division's information, uh, but you'll have access to our modules. And in those modules, you'll find different topics, resources, uh, links, presentations, videos, um, and other University of Michigan resources uh, on our Canvas page on, under our modules. And they're organized according to executive functioning skill, according to uh, disability or neurodivergence. So uh, you'll definitely have an easier way to navigate our modules that way. And you'll also have access to uh, our division's uh, contact information. So you know, if you are uh, an, a an athlete or thinking of being an athlete, we have information on our uh, de uh, partner department, ASF in our uh, division. Um, and other resources as well. So um, not only will you have access to that information and the modules, you'll also see um, uh, a more of a self-regulated approach when it comes to the topics that we have. So these are not just resources for you to just look at and just kind of forget about. A lot of it is engaging, as we mentioned before, um, and we also have other things like announcements for programs and workshops and other events that we have each week or each semester. We have our newsletters as well. So keep an eye out for those because those are uh, uh, over, over, over encompassing of all of our programs for that month or that time of the semester. And uh, yes, they are asynchronous. So you, know, you don't need to register for a particular time of day for anything for access. You can navigate these at the convenience of your time and your schedule, whether it's during the day, the night, the weekend, during break, whenever you want. Um, yes, and you have the QR code uh, for Canvas as well. So that's just a form, a sign up form um, uh, on the Canvas page, uh, the QR code. So if you need to uh, sign up for that, please uh, go ahead and scan that QR code. And uh, that way you can sign up to have access to our Canvas if you don't already. And I will hand it off to Amy to discuss student engagement and other items. Hi everyone, I am Amy geiger Mays, and I'm a program lead with ASAP as well. And one of my roles as program lead is to manage the student engagement piece of ASAP. Um, this entails supporting students while they find a group or an organization to join based on their needs and their likes or dislikes, um, as well as providing student organizations with the opportunity to obtain funding through SAS. Um, and we provide that opportunity while these organizations work toward their goal or their goals of supporting disabled students um, and community members um, in their um, mission to provide greater accessibility and inclusivity. Um, there is a QR code there that um, if anybody's interested in that will take you directly to a Qualtrics application and this year we're running it twice. We're running it in the fall semester and the winter semester. So that application opened on September the 1st and it'll close on the 24th of November with funding going out um, prior to when everyone leaves in December. Um, another aspect is I support our team while we provide um, campus events and programming for our students. And this can include end of semester celebrations, 
or community building opportunities. And I think Christy is going to talk a little bit about um, what that may mean uh, when she talks a little bit later about our virtual resource event. Um, finally, I provide uh, video newsletters to our students and these newsletters come about at least three times a semester. And in these newsletters, there's information about all the services that we provide as well as to any current um, links to any current past sessions or coaching corner workshops that are upcoming. We also include links to current campus happenings uh, for the disabled community. Um, sometimes that can be opportunities to join in on a research um, oh, survey or something like that. But um, we try to collect as much information that pertains to our students as possible through this newsletter. And also during that time, we, we provide support and connecting liais with liaisons or student organizations. And then finally, the other part is that of, just a second, I'm sorry, um, career support for our undergraduate students. Oh, sorry, I don't know. Christy, did you have the, oh, I'm sorry. I put the flyer in for the um, mini grants, but I will put that link in the chat as well. I think I added it a little bit too late, so I apologize for that. Um, along with student engagement and coaching, um, I am the liaison for the University Career Center for our students. And we are joining with them and working toward providing support for our undergraduate students with disabilities. So students will be able to go in through Handshake and set up an appointment with me. Um, it's all individualized. You know, we provide appointments for resumes, cover letters, internship, job preparation. Um, and like I said, the student is the goal there. So they, they choose where we're gonna start. And that should be coming in late fall 2023. So we are currently working on making sure um, the knowledge base is there and the skill base is there. So that's something to look forward to. Uh, in the meantime, if graduate students need any support in seeking guidance in the UCC, please feel free to contact us at asapprograms at umich.edu. And I can definitely send you in the right direction and kind of go over the tools on the website. Um, there's an abundance of resources, even for grad and PhD students. So it's all really good stuff. Um, and then I think that's about it with that. And then I'll let Christy talk a little bit about the tutoring scholarship, or maybe it's Mike, sorry. This, this is Mike, but I want to pause because I like to chunk things. So we have talked about Coaching Corner. We have talked about Canvas. We've talked about UCC. We've talked about mini grants. Um, do you guys have questions that you're thinking about right now in regards to any of those resources? Yeah, um, I don't know if you can hear me. Um, yes. I have a question. Um, so for them, the mini grants, I'm sort of curious, like, is there a cap on like how many mini grants get awarded? And also like, um, is there like a specific like guidelines or restrictions on like what those mini grants must cover? I'm gonna throw that to Amy, but also thank you for having your camera on because I am living vicariously through wherever you are. It's so sunny. <laughs> I think I- I'm actually at a restaurant. Oh. Yes, I will put the link to the Qualtrics in there. Can you repeat your question? My dog was barking crazily because <laughs> her dad just got home. Can you please repeat that question for me? I'm sorry. Sure, sure. Yeah, so my question was with regards to the the um, mini grants. And I was curious um, if there was a cap or restriction on the number of uh, uh, mini grants that are awarded and also if there was any restrictions or guidelines for like what those grants must must cover um so what i'm going i'll put it in the chat right now um there are certain criteria that we address as well as funding there is a max of a thousand dollars per organization um per fiscal year so that is the cap that's on there right now but within the uh information i'll put in chat you'll see all the criteria. Um, you know, some, some groups have come through and 
applied, but we're really looking for those student groups that are seeking to offer greater accessibility and inclusivity for our disabled students. So I'll put that in there right now. And if you look at that, um, it may answer all of your questions, but if you have any more, please feel free to reach out to us and I'd be happy to address those with you. Does that answer your question for now? Yes, it does, thanks. Okay, you're welcome. Any other questions right now? I love it, engagement and interaction, so thank you for those questions. Okay, I'm gonna throw it to you, Mike. Awesome, thank you. Um, let's talk about uh, our tutoring scholarship. So uh, I there's a link on here um, for anyone to send applications to have access to uh, potentially having access to our tutoring scholarship. So really the use of the tutoring scholarships is for students who have tutoring needs that are above and beyond what is already offered on campus. So what that means is, let's say, um, there's a course that doesn't have an assigned tutor uh, on campus for, or there's not any other academic resources or support within the department, that would be a good note to, to, to apply for uh, potentially uh, having access to our tutoring scholarship. Um, the funds are uh, for really, let, as mentioned, people who have tutoring needs above and beyond what is available. Um, but many of our graduate students' needs are in a way, um, uh, they might have more of potential to get those funds because there's less on campus support uh, for them, as, as many of you already know. And uh, undergraduate students, uh, we asked them to make an appointment with us first to discuss kind of what campus resources they have used or to have a discussion or conversation about the, the needs that are being met or not being met. Um, for those situations, we have a, a link for a, a Canly appointment to for that kind of situation. Uh, but I would encourage filling out the tutoring scholarship form on the top, uh, just to, so we can get information on the academic background, the kind of supports and needs that are um, uh, that are needed. Um, and these applications, we do review them on a weekly basis. Um, so uh, we try to be as thorough as possible when it comes to addressing the needs that any student might have regarding this. And then also, um, if students do not have an unmet need uh, with financial aid standards, there'll be additional steps as well. So, um, and yeah, then, let me I'll clarify. So I will just clarify on that. So, um, if you do not have unmet need, um, it's still possible. Uh, there is just a workaround. So don't think that, well, I don't have unmet, meet, unmet need, so I can't apply. Please still apply. Um, yes. We just have to implement a workaround. Thank you. Um, and then things that are asked for uh, in the tutoring, you know, the program, the disability, the courses that the funding is needed for, um, the academic impact of tutoring, the tutor, so that there's a particular tutor in mind, uh, we need credentials as well. So once you navigate the tutoring scholarship form, you'll see the kind of information that we're requesting. And the reason for that really is just to ensure that you're getting the best services, the best support possible. So this is really to support you uh, in the process. So if you feel like you are uh, these this is something you're you're interested in, or you think you're qualified for this. Please uh, take an interest in the tutoring scholarship. So Victoria had a great question. Um, are there also contacts or resources to find tutors? And I will share with you some exciting news. So we have a grad student that's working to create and compile um, different. Uh, tutors on campus because it was always placed on the student as an onus, like find your tutor and we'll give you the funding, but that can be a barrier for a lot of our disabled students. So we wanted to take that barrier away. So um, if you know of a tutor, great. Um, if you don't though, we'll meet with Anna and um, she will share some tutors in the area that you're looking and you can kind of um, work with her to vet them or vet them yourself. Um, it's it's up to you, but yes, so we are working to, to create a database of current tutors in different uh, areas on campus. If you have any like general questions just about tutoring, 
honestly. So the Cambly link that's on there, please feel free to like make an appointment with uh with Anna. Um that's uh if you're having confusion or you need support even filling out the form or maybe there's certain questions on there that you're not sure about yet, um, please make an appointment with Anna. That appointment is open to anyone who's interested in this. Um, and the tutoring scholarships form is just our, as Christy mentioned, our, to have a database of what we want to provide for the students that are applying. So please don't feel like that form is a barrier to you or any question is a barrier to you. Uh, make an appointment with Anna in that Cambly link anytime you have a question or just need to navigate the process with someone. Thank uh, you, Mike. So um, one of the ways that we've taken in feedback from our students is they have said, it is exhausting navigating this enormous campus. Um, is there any way to virtually bring resources together so that I'm using less spoons to meet with different offices? Can we bring them virtually in one space so that I can just meet with them? Um, so hence, we uh, just had our first annual virtual resource event. Um, we hope to have these both um, in the beginning of fall semester and the beginning of winter semester where we bring diverse um, offices on campus that could be supports for students. Um, and then we create a link. We have breakout rooms for all of those um, offices. We create a program um, that gives visual descriptions of the office and um, of the representative for each office so that you can go back to that anytime that you need to. Um, thank you, Victoria. Um, but then also, um, we let you move freely in that virtual resource time through all of the breakout rooms um, so that you can only see the sources, the offices that you need support from. So it's very student driven. We're just bringing them together to make it more accessible for you. Um, and then we also do raffles if you attend. Um, so we gave um, Order Out of Chaos is a, an academic planner um, that is very useful for neurodivergent students particularly. So we gave that away along, along with a pop puck, and I may have just put mine away, um, which is a fidget um, that, that works well to keep us busy. Um, so we are always looking to expand who you think should be involved in this. We have reached out to who we think um, would be beneficial to students. So we had a couple Rackham Graduate School support offices there. Um, we are always looking to expand. So if you are like, you know what, I would love to see this office there, we would love that feedback. So ASAP programs at umich.edu is always a great way to share that with us. And we really value your input because you are why we are here. Um, okay, any more questions? It was a low energy Thursday and I appreciate you all sticking it out with us. Christy, you mentioned um, this acronym and I saw it on one of your um, flyers as well. And I was just wondering if you could um, go over what a SMART goal is for those Ooh. who may not know. Yes. Um, let's see if I can remember. It's quiz, quiz Christie time. Smart, uh, specific, measurable, attainable, results oriented, and time based. Um, sorry. So we really like to. Um, I mean, who wants to work on a goal where they can't see the results? So we really focus um, our goals with students in academic coaching on being smart goals. Um, what can we see results in within a semester? Um, what does that look like? Because um, it will look different to each individual student. Um, so that is what it, that is what it stands for: um, specific, measurable, attainable, um, time based, and or relevant and time based. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions?
I have another, if no yeah. one has any. Um, at the very beginning, you mentioned that you have a lot of students who coach undergrads. Can you tell me what that entails? And if somebody was were interested in something like that, um, yes. how would they go about that? That it, So we post um, on um, the UMIS Jobs website, um, fall and winter, we will have postings uh, for graduate students. Um, that would like to be um, coaches for undergraduate students. So our, I call them GSCs um, because they're, you know, we have our GSIs. So we have our GSCs, graduate student coaches who coach undergrad students on executive functioning skill building. Um, and we have quite a few students who are um, registered with our office um, that are also coaches for us. So um, we actually, um, we have found that it works well when students know some of the barriers that might be faced um, and how to navigate those. So we welcome lots of applications. Um, so that will always be posted on the UMICH um, job site. Um, I forget what the actual title of it is, um, but it's, it, there is coach in it. Um, it might be peer academic coach. I'm not sure if they put, I, I'm not sure if they changed it yet to our graduate student coach. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I, if you are interested, I will share a little bit more. So we do, um, we do offer um, a competitive pay. Um, I will be open and, and transparent because that's who I am. Uh, $20 an hour. We are mostly virtual. Um, and we ask that you give us between 15 to 20 hours of time. Is that a week or a semester? Great question. That is per week. It will fluctuate based on, um, you know, the, the start of the semester is usually a little bit slower, and then it'll kind of pick up pace as we get more students requesting. Midterms, it's a big pickup. <laughs> Other questions? Uh, someone joined late and they wanted to see uh, Canvas, like, uh, more information on Canvas. So can we uh, go back to that slide? Yes, of course. So um, we have our own Canvas page uh, and really it's where we put as many resources and information as possible when it comes to the programs that we offer and the materials that we use. So uh, the QR code on the slide, make sure to scan that and you'll get access to a link to uh, request uh, being added to our Canvas if you haven't been added already. Um, so please make sure to sign that up and you'll be added to it within the day or two max. And um, basically what's included on our Canvas are modules and those modules cover uh, the different resources, different uh, skill building techniques and strategies. Um, and it also includes disability related issues, uh, executive functioning skills, as we talked about, self-regulated learning um, and other resources that, you know, students usually face in a university setting. Um, most common really topics people try to get access to, I apologize for that, um, is our uh, Topics like task prioritization and initiation, time management, organization, study skills, stuff like that. So uh, and to get access to that, you'd need uh, to have access to our Canvas. And you can see announcements and newsletters and other materials on there as well. So I will share. I We did not put this in because we were thinking ASAP directly. But I am going to share a link and then share something with you, um, if that's OK. Um, just because who doesn't want to know about scholarship opportunities? Um, so is a SAS scholarship opportunity flyer showing? Yes, perfect. Yes. Um, so there are different, um, if you see on the left-hand column, there's different um, scholarships available for different um, disabilities. Um, and all of them are hyperlinked, but there's also, Oh, maybe not. Yeah, maybe it's right here is the scholarships and most of them should be open right now. Um, so you can click these uh, that link up there. Um, and if you have any of these disabilities, um, 
you can apply uh, for scholarships to help you with your education. Um, some of them like disability funding, um, let me read this to you, provides funds for things to make one's University of Michigan experience more enjoyable. So it does not have to be academic related. Um, like I would really like a jacket because I came from Texas and Michigan gets cold. Um, that would make your experience more enjoyable. Those things are covered. So anything that you think would make it more enjoyable, that's kind of an all encompassing fund um, that you can apply to. So I didn't wanna not share the, the scholarships that we have through um, SAAS office. Yes, so I did that infograph link uh, above your comment, comment, Andrea or Andrea, um, is is the scholarships one. But yep, perfect. Thank you, Sam. Any other questions? You guys have been a great audience. If no one has any questions or if questions come to you later as you're able to ruminate a little more, we will be placing our panelist email addresses in the chat so that you can reach out to them directly if you have, if anything else comes to mind. <clears throat> I want to thank you all for being here, for your presence and for your participation. And I wanna thank our panelists for their time and their expertise um, that they shared with us today. Um, I'm grateful, thank you to all. Our, we will be posting a link to a survey in the chat, and that's just an evaluation survey to help us better these experiences for you. So if you could please just open up the tab so we have it ready and waiting for you on a break, um, that would we would appreciate it because we all were always trying to improve. And that's Thank it. You. Thank you very much. I hope Thank you take care you. of yourself. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>